Nice to see you again, and that was a extraordinary night of football. That was. Yeah, unfortunately, without people. So seven goals here in St James Park. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, now a victory away. Uh, good lessons for us. Incredible spirit and uh, how we fought, how we come back, and not disappointed. Uh, that show what this team it is. So. Uh, uh, no any complaints and regrets about the, after being champion, after just training one day. It's normal the distractions that we had. We have to learn of that, but it's normal after winning the the Premier League. The players, you know, normally they want to do it, but it's already done. But still, we have 60, 70 days before the final. So, but will be a good lesson for the future to come back as soon as possible. And uh, <coughs> but. The spirit and the way we run and we play was really good. Ferran Torres, talk about him, hat-trick uh, for him. Uh, having incredible numbers uh, and goals in, uh, in, the, in his first season in, uh, in the Premier League. Premier League, everyone knows how tough it is. He's so young and uh, he's so clinical. So he's a guy who bought it like a, like a winger, but maybe have to think about it, put it as like a striker. You have an incredible sense of goal, a good finishing. The second goal in Crystal Palace is a good... A good uh, demonstration and, and yeah, all the goals. He's a uh, yeah, he's a good player. Uh, Scott, having got back out and got another Premier League appearance, how pleased are you? It's ended in victory in a game that went one way and then the other at times. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing at the end of the day was the three points, and um, I think he kept the unbeaten away record going. Um, so yeah, it was it, for me personally, it was it was brilliant to get a game. Yeah, I was a little bit nervous before because I think it's been over two years. So, um, but once that whistle goes, you, I, I just I forgot the the feeling of how much I, I enjoyed it and why I've why I've loved playing football since since I can remember. And um, like you say, at two um, when they get the, when they get the penalty and we're going at two two, you think is it going to be is it going to be one of them days? And then obviously the lads come up to me after the game and. First thing I said is there's only there's only me that plays in them sort of games. <laughs> I think it, we said it would have been a, a boring nil nil if Eddie played. I think you managed to throw in a, a penalty save in the game as well, but I guess underlines the life for goalkeeper. You save it and he knocks yeah. in the, the loose ball. Yeah, I think um, I think because he probably didn't put it as as far in the corner as he wanted, it's more hit me on the forearm and unfortunately span span back across the the front of the goal. But um, no. Like you said, there, he's, he's tapped the rebound in, so the, the penalty serves irrelevant. It would have been nice if it went around the post or one of the one of the defenders would have cleared it. But um, going back to what we said before, the most important thing was the was the victory. There's not much room for sentiment in football at times, but how much did it mean to you to get this opportunity tonight, and the fact that your teammates wanted you to get an opportunity? Yeah, it means everything to me. Um, obviously, I think we. Someone just said there. It was ten years ago since I played a Premier League game, so. Um, there does come a point where you think you're never going to ever get the chance again, and uh, but it's never it's never stopped me working hard and um, enjoying what I'm doing day in day out, and um, hopefully how I've been around the place and how I've trained is is maybe um, he's maybe rewarded me with with giving me a game. So uh, I'll just keep keep doing what I've been doing and um, supporting the lads best I can. Just finally, give us an insight in what enables this group of players to, to reach the heights that they are reaching just now, the way they've come back and, and reclaimed the title this season and pushed themselves into a, into a Champions League final. No, it's an incredible group. They've got a um, great mix. Um, obviously, they've got the best manager in the world. His tactics are nothing like we've seen before. And But he's got the players who can he, he can do it. He can plan it on the training ground, put it on the tactics board and... They, they can do it, they do, no questions asked. But um, no, it's, it obviously it didn't start too well at the start, but um, no one, no one stopped believing, and ev everybody knew it was it was only a matter of one victory, and they could go on, on a great run, and, and that's obviously what happened. Welcome back. Uh, we've been treated to a thoroughly entertaining Premier League contest at St James's Park at Manchester City, the newly crowned champions, winning away to Newcastle United by four goals to three. Ferran Torres will undoubtedly come away with the headlines. I just wonder now, has he almost announced his arrival on the back of that hat-trick today? Well, he's given Pep a big decision now again. We talk about off-air, off we're talking about who's going to play in the Champions League final. And when you score a hat-trick with a couple of games before the final, he must be thinking, 
I'm ready. Pep put me put me in the final. Um, what a great game! You know what a, he looked like. He's played there all his life, and he's he's just looked really sharp when 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 defenders were sort of dreaming or sleeping. He was coming alive. He he was alive in the box, as we say, fox in the box, and he was he was really sharp tonight. How impressed were you with his performance? Really impressed, and um, you know, I sat here complaining before the start of the game that they've, they've won the Premier League without centre forward. What chance have you got? But I saw a centre forward today that I'm excited about, and I think in in time to come he will be a major force for, for for Man City in the way that they play. Do you think they might actually contemplate him as a future successor for Sergio Aguero? Well, Pep sees him every day, works with him every single day. So he, we've seen him tonight. We thought he was brilliant. He could be like that every single day in general. We don't know sitting mm. here, but. He's definitely given something to think about for sure. And we thought before the game, Jesus would play central yeah. and maybe him on, on the wide ones. But, you know, Jesus was outright and, and, and Torres was through the middle. And you can see why. I say he's clinical tonight and uh, he's going home with a match ball. At one apiece, his first of his three made it 2-1 in City's favour. It's just the, the audacity of it though, Shay, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of quality here. I mean, the, the ball from Gundogan's fantastic. I mean, Murphy won't be overly happy with his defensive point of view. If we highlight Murphy at the front here, he should drop with the rest of the line, and I think he heads us clear if he does that. When you have a forward-thinking player in a dangerous area like that, then mm. he's going to cause problems. But taking nothing away from the finish, that has a phenomenal finish. No right to score, really, from there. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's one of those those, those freaky... Well, first of all, I thought he's flick, flicking it to the far post, but then when I look at his reaction and where he looks at the ball, he, he knows he's hit that on target. So, an unbelievable finish. Absolutely unbelievable finish. Remember Giroud scoring a goal similar, pretty similar yeah. Some, yeah. some years ago, but that's some outstanding. Is something like that instinctive? Yeah, I mean, you know where the goal is and, you know, he, he knows his game's about scoring goals and you just look at his reaction. He's not looking to the far post. He's looking, as soon as he's, he's, he's made connection, he's looking straight to the goal because he knows this is on target and he's got a chance. And the goal of the night, finish. definitely, and could even be one of the goals of the season. I think yeah. we'll look that back at the end of the season yeah. thinking... It's got to be up there with one of the goals of the season. Fantastic finish. Newcastle went on to score two penalties. But then, of course, City hit back through Ferran Torres. He showed his predatory instinct, really, didn't he, for his second goal? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the thing for, for a Newcastle point of view, they'll be disappointed because he's free in the middle of the box. If you see how his runs on. I mean, again, Hez just does well on, on, on the way when gets the ball in the box. But when we see the replay, I many shall see either Kraft's got to get to him or I think it's Willock's got to get back as a mm -hmm. midfielder and pick him up. You see he's free in the middle of the goal. I, you know, think some... I think it's always difficult, sorry to jump in there, I think it's always difficult. When he picks up that position there, as a, as a centre-off, you're never going to go in there and mark him because you're fighting at that ball that goes across the, yeah. the six-yard box. So he, he's clever in his movement. He's not gone in so, he, so that someone can pick him up. He's just stood on the edge. And if you're not getting a midfield player coming and marking him, yeah. then the centre-half's always going to go on the, on the six-yard box. When we saw City shape up initially for the contest and they decided to put Torres in the middle and... Gabriel Jesus out on the right. Were you surprised by that? I was because we've not seen Torres before. So I was thinking Jesus is going to play through the middle yeah. and maybe he will play for the right. But then early on in the game, he made a great run across the near post and hit it with the outside of his boot and I thought it was in. Uh, it just went wide and it just shows why. Because mm. all these goals were one touch. As for the third goal that completed the hat-trick, if Newcastle weren't safe at this moment in time in their season, would they have defended this one differently? Yeah, possibly. I think they're getting a lot of bodies forward. They're, they're trying to score themselves, to be fair to them. You know, we talk about get, being a clever foul, so Sterling gets fouled here now. And Newcastle players, for me, looked a bit leggy. Talk about 82% possession. So they're chasing the ball most of the night, but Sterling comes alive, does a quick free kick. And if you watch the, the reaction of the Newcastle players now, maybe that's a reaction of the team that are safe. Yeah. I mean, he should probably right. Yeah. If they're scrapping for points, they're sprinting to get back into position. And now they never really get their team shaped back in the right positions. And comes out to Cancelo here on, on the left side and, and again I think maybe Murphy can come out to the ball quicker they just looked a bit leggy at this point a little bit of luck to Torres would ends up here but again Les what a finish that yeah, first time great finish and again look at him look where his position is then he makes the run as if he's going to go for the ball gets himself in that, in that position he's on side just as the ball's played there and hits the post and, and falls to him and sometimes you say he was lucky but you'll find out throughout his career when the type of centre forward he is this will always drop to him because yeah. he's always looking for it. And that's a good sign, isn't it? Because you could see that wasn't the cleanest of finishes. No. And no matter which way it goes in, it doesn't matter. But clearly that is a feather in his cap, though, isn't it? It certainly is because he's always in, that, in and around that yeah. box looking for those balls that come across the, the box, looking for the things that come off the goalkeeper, looking for the things that come off the post. That means he'll score a lot of goals. Yeah. Yeah, lovely to hear from Ferran Torres. Interestingly, though, he talks about being equally comfortable playing out on the right wing or down the middle as a false or a real nine. Uh, is he a star in the making for you as a proper nine? 
I think you look at uh, all modern day centre forwards or front players, and they most of them can play, and they'll say in any one of the positions. Every yeah. every every time I get a, 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 a agent text me about a player, he can play anywhere across the front three nowadays. Mm. So um. It obviously, he's obviously one of them as well. He's a right winger, but can play centre. But it's an easy selling point. Then it for certainly them, is, yeah. mate. And uh, when you look at the goals that he scored tonight, he looked like a genuine centre forward. Hmm. And so for me, um, we're talking about strikers. It just looked like it because the goals were instinctive. He didn't think about them. Just bang, bang, bang. Hmm. Thirteen goals from him in all competitions, which is more than Riyad Mahrez in his first season mm -hmm. uh, at the Etihad. had. And at twenty million pounds. It looks like a decent bit of business from City, this. It's a bargain, yeah. Um, and he says in interviews, well, he scored a hat-trick against Germany as well, which is which is no mean feat. Mm -hmm. um, hat-trick tonight, Premier League hat-trick. Um, <laughs> he's putting himself in the thoughts. You know, I know he asked the question about the Champions League final and, and Pep will be looking at the game tonight and watch it back tomorrow and think, tell you what, we don't mean we'll have to spend 100 million in the summer. We are, might have the answer already there. And we were trying to name the Champions League <laughs> final team as well. And we're trying to, there's one last piece of the jigsaw and, and Torres has done himself no harm tonight. Yeah. They'd still, of course, have two more games. But after that one game today, he's almost undroppable for the next one, isn't he? Yeah, you would think so. But again, we spoke before the game. He's got to get the balance right of playing the team he probably wants to start in the final, getting their fitness, getting their sharpness right for the final. But then again, when someone scores a hat-trick, as you say, Manish, it's very hard to drop in the next game. But if you're Torres, you just want to keep on playing, won't you, on the back of a hat-trick? Of course you do. Of course you do. But this is modern-day football. And you can score a hat-trick and be, be on the bench for the next game, which is, as a, as a, as a centre-forward, as someone who scores goals, it frustrates the absolute life out of you.